Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've got four giant stories, starting with Intel's four core Tiger Lake part beating AMD's eight core chip, Nvidia's first Ampere PCI Express card is here, RTX 3000 specs leak, and the first RTX 3000 benchmark crushes the 2080 Ti. Okay, it's news time and first up for today I've got a huge story on Intel's upcoming Tiger Lake processors. If you keep up with the channel you saw the recent story where Intel's Ryan Shrout shared a video of him playing Battlefield 5 on the upcoming processors with some very impressive results. Well, in a recent tweet from RO Game, he shares a Time Spy benchmark comparing Intel's upcoming Tiger Lake i7 1165G7 to AMD's Ryzen 7 4700U. Like the Ryzen 4700U, the 1165G7 is Intel's second to top tier ultra low power processor. The difference is that the i7 is a 4 core part versus AMD's 8 core 4700U. Now the 1165G7 does have multi threading while the 4700U does not, but 8 threads is not the same as 8 cores. They also have the same TDP in this comparison, so you could certainly argue that Intel is pushing the i7, but with half the cores, the i7 CPU score is essentially identical to AMD's. To say that that's impressive is an understatement. I mean, it's sad Intel is still on 4 cores, I'd love to see an 8 core Tiger Lake chip, but if this is what we can expect out of desktop, AMD had better have some good stuff up their sleeve. I mean, it seems they do, but just wow. Oh, and the graphics score got over 35% higher than AMD's 4700U, which is around what we got from the Battlefield 5 gameplay. Of course, as I've said many times before, Renoir is still using Vega, so AMD does have RDNA up their sleeve. But still, AMD is using 7 nanometer Vega. Either way you slice it, this is a massive jump for Intel, and it's going to be great to see the two companies fight it out over the next few years. Now, if you love tech as much as I do, and you either want to pursue a career in it or simply learn the concepts that make it all work, learn by doing with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the new tool that makes learning math and science easy. See, they don't just teach you what to do, but how to do it. Brilliant helps you master the concepts by actually doing them in fun and creative ways so anyone can learn. And they've got everything from the basics of computer science to neural networks or even algorithm fundamentals. Plus there's daily challenges to keep you sharp and learning more. So what are you waiting for? You can sit around all day or learn a new skill by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt and the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up for today, Nvidia has officially announced their first PCI Express and Peer GPU. It's actually the A100 Accelerator PCI Express version. And if you haven't seen my video where I go over the specs of the A100, check it out right here. Interestingly, the PCI Express version is a much lower TDP of 250 watts versus the 400 watts of the SXM model. But according to Computer Base, the power draw is the same in peak loads. It's the sustained loads where the PCI Express version drops down, but it also loses between 10 and 50% performance. So it's obviously not better. It just trades performance for lower power draw. At the end of the day, this obviously isn't a gaming card, but it's nice to see the first PCI Express powered in peer. Lastly for today, we finally have our first RTX 3000 benchmark, as well as some essentially confirmed specs. So let's get started. The information was found and shared by resident leaker RO Game, and first up are specs. In a recent tweet, he confirms that there are three different GA102 variants that Nvidia is currently testing. As you can see, there's one with 10GB of video RAM, 12GB, and 24 now, coincidentally, the leaker's cat Corgi and Copite 7 Kimmy shared the same thing in recent tweets where they leaked the specs of the upcoming cards. Obviously, that makes these specs seem quite a bit more real. Plus, both leakers have been right in the past. Basically, all three of Nvidia's top cards will utilize the GA102 GPU. For those who don't know, the 102 variant is typically only used in the Titan and ADTI cards, so this could show Nvidia is planning to really push their upcoming specs. As for the naming scheme itself, no one really seems to know, as leaks show some differences here and there, but Nvidia themselves may still be debating. Regardless, according to these leaks, the lower end card comes with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X at 19 gigabits per second and the same amount of cores as the current 2080 Ti. 
Then there's the 3080 Super, TI, or 3090, whatever it is, with 5,248 cores and 12 gigabytes of 21 gigabits per second memory. Lastly is the Titan, or maybe 3090, I don't know. Still, we're talking a whopping 5,376 CUDA cores and 24 gigabytes of 17 gigabit per second memory. And of course, all of that is interesting, but performance is really all that matters, so let's get to it. While going through the 3 d Mark database, RO Game spotted a private Time Spy benchmark on what he claims is an Ampere GPU. Fortunately, he was even able to verify that it was done by an NVIDIA employee, so it is authentic. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly which GPU it is, whether it's the Titan 3090, 3080 Ti, or what. Either way, it completely obliterates the RTX 2080 Ti. In fact, it beats the Founders Edition 2080 Ti by just over 30%, and it beats the MSI 2080 Ti Lightning Z by 21%. At the end of the day, that's definitely impressive, and shows us about what we should expect from a new generation, given this is the 3080 Ti. Of course, it is likely an early sample with more to come. I mean, the clocks do seem a bit lower than what we should expect, and this doesn't give us anything on ray tracing. Plus, maybe it's a 3080. Probably not. So while that does it for today, do you think that benchmark is of the 3080 or 3080 Ti? Explain your reasoning down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Brilliant in the description. And as always, have a great day.